Amy Haggard from RMIT University in Melbourne, Australia. And the title of the talk is Musical Embrace Exploring Social Awkwardness in Digital Games. Thank <laughs> you. 
to look at Benford's theory of group of experience and apply it to our research. Prohiski we came up with a set, a set of strategies to utilize social openness in our science. So why use strategies? Designing for social openness is not easy. We hope that with our strategies, we can help designers utilize social openness in their designs. I'll present six strategies grouped into three major categories. <coughs> the three major categories are facilitating, <coughs> transforming, and letting players take control of social openness. With strategy A1, we use the hardware, um, which made it possible to set up a socially awkward situation of being very close to a stranger. It requires the two players to collaboratively apply pressure to the board senses of the opposite side, which is all, to, pro pro sorry, to progress through the virtual environment. The second strategy was players move their bodies in social uncomfortable ways, such as twisting their hips to navigate the virtual world. We found the reward system in the virtual world benefited our game as it began to excuse the player's actions. This also encouraged players to experiment with these actions. Strategy B, transforming social goals. So we use the control to allow players to convert these actions. As players are not familiar with the new controller, they were required to acquire a new skill with the interface through observation of others and trial and error. This then transformed their socially awkward actions into more acceptable, acceptable ones. As players engage in gestures similar to an embrace, ultimately resulting in a hug. Strategy B2, we allow players to turn the social awkwardness into a public performance. Performing to an audience was also, very, also a way for players to experiment with social awkwardness. For example, one man lifted up a woman to turn the nature of the experience into one in which he had become a public performer. The final strategy C is taking control of social awkwardness. So we utilize the virtual world to reduce the social awkwardness temporarily. The existence of the screen not only serves as a display for the game, but also becomes a social sanctuary when the experience becomes too awkward. Players found that they could take control of social awkwardness temporarily by redirecting their attention from their comfortable interaction and instead focusing on the game. Strategy C2 was to convey to players that they can quit at any time. Playing a game is voluntary, a voluntary activity, hence it is important for players to know that they can quit at any time if awkwardness becomes too much. The walk up and play setup of the controller conveyed to participants that they could engage and disengage with it at any time. So, in conclusion, we present these three major categories. Transforming, facilitating, and taking control of awkwardness. <coughs> Social awkwardness can be an engaging game element, but it needs to be designed carefully. <coughs> Hopefully, in your next project, this presentation will cross your mind and you'll ask yourself, how could you start? How can my design benefit from social awkwardness? Thanks everyone for listening. Got many questions. Okay, send them in the back. Hi, thank you for an awkward presentation. Um, it seems that there are levels of social and physical awkward, awkwardness. Maybe your um, gadget kind of crossed the lines that some people 
uh, might want to, to cross. Could you think of other, or did, did you try um, levels of awkwardness? Or? Thank you. All right, and then the lady. So the, the work is really interesting, but one thing that screams out at me is just this idea of what happens if you have, let's say, um, an older man and a young female child who want to play this type of game together. Is there, I mean, isn't there some element here of um, cases where you don't want social awkwardness to be breached? Um, like I said, it's a voluntary thing, so, and our game has been only set up in controlled environments at the stage, so at a conference, and, um, like, you understand what you mean, like, um, I guess we don't really allow that situation, maybe, but, we also have like, parents who want to play with their children as well. And that's just been really great. Like, that brief, the kids and dads fix them up and they all have like, a big group hug. Um, all right, Professor Kostakos in the back. Hi. <coughs> I'm a Greek living in northern Finland, and awkwardness is part of my daily life. Um, but it just happens everywhere. And I'm just wondering if any of the strategies you discussed could be applied to non-games or to some mobile device or service, right? Then, or something outside the set context where people go to play the game. If I have the thing in an elevator, they will have a heart attack. <laughs> Is there any uh, difference in terms of sense of openness between multiple cultural background or uh, well, um, their background or I don't know, uh, na nationality or do you see any difference between people from other countries or? Is the sense of awkwardness it's universal for every human kind? Um, I think we found a barrier between anyone. Like, uh, we had it, um, two girls, and they're quite close to friends, and one of the conference, and one of the girls was just dead set on she would not go anywhere near it because she was that, that scared of being close to her. Yeah, or being awkward. So I think it just um, it happens to everyone, no matter their culture or background. Um, and then um, we have people from different cultures who have no problem with it as well. We're just happy to try it out and yeah. And most people found that when they did play it, it wasn't that awkward. All right. Thank you, Amy. That concludes our session. I thank the audience and the speakers for, for their participation. And uh, please note that 
That's Stana's keynote starting in lecture hall C1 nearby.